most people today, the Protestant Reformation is little more than a boring history lesson, events that took place over 400 years ago. But what would you think if I told you that the drama of the Protestant Reformation actually contains a hidden key to understanding the Bible's most powerful prophecies, which are even now being fulfilled right before our eyes? The book of Revelation says, All the world wondered and followed the beast. Who is this beast? And what importance does its identity have for us today? And what does all of this have to do with the Reformation? You're about to find out as we journey once again deep into the Antichrist Chronicles. Students who go through college normally have a minor and a major. Well, I want to tell you, folks, that tonight's subject is far from minor. This is major leagues. If you have a Bible, I invite you to open up to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. This is probably one of the biggest subjects that we've covered so far in the Antichrist Chronicles series. 2 Thessalonians 2. We'll be studying, reading this passage in just a little bit. And as we always do, please, folks, let's do what? Let's pray, definitely. So I invite you to bow your heads. Let's lift up our hearts and talk to God. Dear Father, Heavenly Father, we come in Jesus' name and we ask for the special influence of the Spirit of the Lord tonight as we get into this incredible subject. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? How many of you like jigsaw puzzles? Do I see a few hands? Go, oh, quite a few hands. When I was a boy, uh, I used to really get into these puzzles. And the more complicated they were, the more I liked them. And I just dug in. I was determined that I was going to put the pieces together. And I was so excited when one piece fit and then another piece fit. And piece by piece, they all came together finally and a picture emerged. You know the feeling, those of you uh, jigsaw puzzle people. When it, when it comes to the biblical subject of the Antichrist, it is also like a big jigsaw puzzle. And what we're going to do in this meeting is try to put a lot of pieces together from previous meetings, put them all together, and hope that this picture will emerge and it will become clear to us what the Bible really is talking about when it speaks of this Antichrist or Antichrist power described in Scripture. So let's go on. Let's dig down. Now, what I'm going to do first is just summarize some things on the screen. We're not going to look at these verses in our Bibles right away, but we'll get to 2 Thessalonians in just a few, few moments. Uh, we studied at the beginning of this series, the first major book we looked at was 1 John, 1 and 2 John. And we read a lot of passages about the Antichrist or the word Antichrist. We talked about how it's used five times, and we went through this. And I'm just going to briefly give you just a quick overview. We looked at 1 John chapter 2, verse 18 which says where John wrote, and he said, even now are there many antichrists. Remember that? Showing that antichrist is not just one person only, but the Bible says that there are many. We also looked at 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, where John continued and said that, talking about these many antichrists, he said, they went out from us. They went out from us, showing that antichrists come out from within, from within the Christian church. And then we also looked at 1 John chapter 2, verse 22, where John said, he said, he is a liar that denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. That was another verse that we looked at. And then also in verse 26, 1 John 2, verse 26, John said, he talked about these many Antichrists that are trying to seduce Christians. And we talked about how Antichrist is something deceptive. It's something subtle. It's not something obvious, overly obvious. Uh, you can be sure that the devil is no dummy. Isn't that right? Uh, Satan is smart. I don't know what kind of an IQ he has, but possibly it's around 10 million. Uh, Satan is extremely smart, and the Bible says in 1 John 2, verse 26, that the Lord wrote these things so that we would not be seduced by Antichrist. And so we have pieces, pieces of a puzzle that come together. There are pieces in 1 John, there are pieces in 2 Thessalonians, there are pieces in Revelation, pieces in Daniel, and as you put these pieces together, so far, this is what we find. Now another passage in 1 John, uh, chapter 4, verse 3, talked about how there is a spirit of Antichrist. Do you remember that? 1 John 4, verse 3. John said, even now the spirit of Antichrist is already in this world. 
Now then if you go down to verse 4, 1 John verse 4, chapter 4, verse 4, John said, little children, I'm writing this to you so that you will overcome these many antichrists. So there's a spirit of antichrist. Antichrist is deceptive. There are many antichrists. And ultimately, Christians need to overcome antichrist. And these are all pieces of a puzzle that we have put together that we found in 1 John showing that these are deceptive elements that rise from within the church and that Christians need to overcome through the power of Jesus Christ. We need to stick to Christ and not be led astray by Antichrist. Isn't that right? So that's 1 John. Okay, now let's go to 2 Second Thessalonians. And let's move on. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. As I mentioned, there's a lot of pieces in a lot of different places. Pieces in 1 John, pieces in 2 Thessalonians, pieces in Daniel, pieces in Revelation. One big jigsaw puzzle. Putting these pieces together is our, our job. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 1. Paul said, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together to him. So Paul talk, talks about Jesus coming picking us up and gathering us, gathering us to him. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that, aren't you? I really want to get out of this world. I'm tired of living on this planet. I'm looking forward to living in a better place up there, aren't you? Amen. Praise God. So Paul talks about this, about Jesus coming and gathering us. Now, verse 3 is a very important piece of this puzzle. Paul said, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, referring to the day when Jesus will come again, he said, that day will not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So Paul is very clear that there's a falling away, and we talked about this on a previous, during a previous meeting, that the falling away or apostasy takes place inside the church before Jesus comes to gather us. Paul's very plain on that. And then he said that this man of sin, now we'll talk about this phrase, man of sin, in just a little while, which refers to Something or someone antichrist also. Even though Paul doesn't use the word antichrist like 1 John does, this verse does say that there will be something or someone, that man of sin, this antichrist, who will be revealed the son of perdition. Paul called him the son of perdition, and that was another one of our pieces of the puzzle. We talked about this the other night, that this phrase was also used by Jesus Christ in reference to Judas that Judas was the son of perdition. And this is a clue phrase showing us that Antichrist is like Judas coming from within and denying the Lord, although he claims to follow him, denied him with a kiss. That's what Judas did. Now then we go on in verse 4, and Paul said that this Antichrist would oppose and would exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God would sit in the very temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We talked about this also, that the temple of God is a phrase that Paul used in 1 Corinthians 3.16 and Ephesians 1, 19 through 21, and he applied this to the church. He said, you are the temple of God, God's temple. And so Antichrist sits right inside the church, according to the Bible. And then we continue on. Another piece is found in verse, verse 7, where Paul said, for the mystery of iniquity, this is a reference also to the Antichrist called the mystery of iniquity, he said it is, and when is it working? Paul said it is now already working. So even in Paul's time, the mystery of iniquity was starting, starting to build. And then he said, only he who now lets, or in other Bibles it says restrains, there's some restraining influence back then in the days of Paul, this restrainer, only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And we talked about how, and we spent a whole meeting on this, like Sherlock Holmes trying to be detectives and find out what this restrainer is all about. And I showed you from Daniel 7 and other, other passages that the restrainer and the early church fathers just about unanimously believed was a reference to the fourth beast of Daniel 7, the Roman Empire. And when the Roman Empire went down, then the little horn referring to the Antichrist came up. And we'll look at that.